There are many tunes that have been rather doctored on YouTube where the vocals have been removed and then all at one pitch, for example. There's an Eye of the Tiger where the whole vocals is just one pitch. But over a pristine backing track, you think, well, how how's that done then? How do you manage to separate all of those things? Well, I'm going to demo this thing today. It's a fantastic app by Hit and Mix and it's called Rip X. And it does all of that sort of thing, but much more. Let's have a look. On the computer screen, I've got one of my tunes. Now, I would do this to a commercial record, but I don't fancy a copyright strike and all of the hassle and lots and lots of money that would go with it. So I'm going to do my own tune instead, and it goes a bit like this. Losing your step, I'm wondering why you have to show me up on the dance floor. So there's some vocals, which are processed, there's some backing vocals, there's bass drums and some guitars and keyboards. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to manufacture just a, a bounce of just a little bit of it. So I'm just going to export this uh, between bar 17 and, well, let's call it 25. That'd be fine. So not very much of this, of this tune. And I'm going to save it as show me up rip X edit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this tune into a stereo file, then put it into Rip X and see what it does with it. See if it can separate everything. Let's have a look at that. So it's just bouncing at the moment. Just wait for that to finish. And then I'll open Rip X up and import it. Now, it does take a little while to import in Rip X. And you think, well, you know, in this modern day of technology, can't you just can't it be instant? Well, there's huge amounts of processing involved, masses. RipX itself is about two gigabyte bit of software. There's a lot going on. So if I just go to RipX now, I'm going to open what I've just created. Show me up ripxedit.wav. There we go. Now it'll bring up a box saying, what do I want to look at? Well, actually, I'm going to look at everything. I'm going to do the voice, bass, drums and percussion, other sounds and instruments. So these are sort of chordal things, piano, guitar, brass, that sort of thing. We can separate out things, though, and you can pigeonhole things together. Really cool. The quality wise, sometimes in the manufacturer's um, own literature, it says that sometimes actually the highest quality is not much better than the sort of high quality, the next one down. But I'm still going to import it at high quality and then it's just going to go a rip. There we go. Now you can save the stems only if you wanted to go into Logic or Cubase or any other thing. Now, this thing does run natively in Pro Tools, other other. Um, audio programs it won't run natively but you can use the editor in this in logic for example so masses can be done now as you can see there's a little progress bar it says less than one minute left in practice it takes a little bit longer but just make a cup of tea hmm. now while that's while that's coming in it's going to separate things into those four main categories but there's four categories there you've got drums uh, the bass and the vocals. But what's it going to do with everything else, the guitars and the backing vocals? Well, it doesn't really matter because actually you can create more tracks in this and actually manually assign things such as guitars, that guitar solo that might appear over the vocals, for example. You can just take the guitar notes and assign them to a separate track for separate processing. How cool is that? So it's just coming to the end of the edit. You can see that there's all of your rips that you do are here. We've got all these tools top left. We've got a little menu on that always appears bottom left unless you move the pointer there, in which case the menu will disappear. That menu is really useful because it just gives you more insight. You don't need to constantly dive into the instruction manual. Just hover the mouse over and away you go. So less than one minute left. It's gone a little bit over a minute. Doesn't matter though, because this is really worth waiting for. Massively worth waiting for. And here it is. You think, oh, there's a load of squiggles on a screen. <laughs> it's a bit more than that. Now, on the bottom right here, we've got a little mixer, which basically shows us the main categories. We've got voice, guitar, bass, kick drum, drums, percussion. Notice it's added guitar, it said other instruments. So it's obviously found a guitar in there. Now, if I just go from the beginning of this track. Losing your step, I'm wondering why you have to show me up. Okay. So it sounds like the original. 
Hmm. Now, the um, colours pertain to different instruments. If I look at the voice here, I'm just going to solo this out. So the little S button for solo gets rid of everything else and you can hear just your vocals. Losing your step, I'm wondering why you have to show me up. Oh, there's a bit of guitar there. Let's have a look. Where was that? Hmm. There's a bit of guitar. So I don't really want that. But it's kind of, it's the, vo the the guitar is a single line and it's quite middly with some attack. It might have thought that it was a vocal track. No worries at all, because all you do is you select it once with the mouse. And then you click on the little arrow just to the left of guitar. And it gets rid of that from your vocal track, but it mag magically appears on your guitar track. So if I solo the guitar now in the same place, there it is. <laughs> How good is that? If I take the voice away completely, you've just got your backing track. Karaoke tracks, here we come. It's even left the backing vocals in there. Now the backing vocals there, I went sort of woo. If I wanted to create a track for backing vocals, I could add a layer here. And I could say backing vocals. And you can then organize all of your backing vocal sounds into that. Even though it didn't detect it in the, in the first instance, it's absolutely fine. You can do that. So if I just look for a track. Hmm. They're there somewhere. There we go. There's one. So I can just go to backing vocals. And then if I solo out the backing vocals, you'll just see that one note there. Fine. Depends how far you want to go into this, but usually you'd want to remove the voice, for example, or you can do some processing at the same time on those. Now, under each voice here, there's another little arrow. You've got a slider for volume, so I could have the voice lower. I don't need to remove it or just solo it. I can rebalance and remix what I've done. So if I just maybe uh, drums. Now, what drums tends to do is it finds snare drums and toms. The kick drum, it stores separately, and then percussion is kind of your hi-hats, your cymbals, and other high things. So if I go from the beginning, there's your snare. Now, I could say, okay, well, the snare, I just want to be a little bit more present. I want to remix this with that snare a bit angrier. Well, you can do that. If I go to drums and just click that arrow, it reveals a three band equalizer. And it's massive, this. It's 30 dB each way. That is vast. I'll tell you what, I'll give you a blast of the snare with the mid turned up. Are you ready for this? Losing your step, I'm wondering why you have to show me up. So the possibilities are endless. The EQ is very wide ranging. And actually, you kind of need this when you're doing things like this. It's really nice to have the power of that. Now, just as just as an aside. Well, actually, it's not an aside. It's the main thing. On the left hand side at the top here, we've got a series of tools which allow you to do all sorts of things. I'm just going to solo out the voice and we just look at the, the vocal part only. Now, I could say, well, this one. I don't really like the vibrato there very much. Well, I can do something about that. If I go to adjust and effects, I can flatten the pitch to any varying degree. I can flatten it completely. I can do the share effect. Now, of course, undo steps. You can just undo, 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 undo. You can do anything you like. Now, the next icon from the the arrow the sort of generic mouse indicator is this <laughs> now what we're looking at here is the vocal parts with harmonics and all sorts of other things that accompany that vocal track up here we have a contrast control which is really useful because then you can see at the bottom if i turn the contrast right down you can kind of see the individual notes the scale has changed on the left hand side we have frequency so all the way from 20 hertz at the bottom to 20 kilohertz at the top and you can zoom in on a particular part of that so you know that i'm singing notes of yeah well 440 hertz is an a so i'm kind of there with it now, 
What we can do with this is, if I just take the contrast up, you can see all sorts of other things, including subsonic frequencies, which we might want to get rid of. But you can do this. Losing your step, I'm wondering why... There's some artefacts at the bottom, some sort of uh, base end. If I just draw a window around some of this, I'll tell you what, I'll go all the way along and just delete. There you go, it's taken everything below about 100 hertz, which is ideally what you want to do when you're mixing anyway. You take sort of 100 hertz and below off your vocal mic, because you don't want any cloudy bass in your mix. Losing your step, I'm wondering why you have to shoot. Now there's other little noises in there. These are fine, these are completely editable, and you can get rid of things like this, but bear in mind, this has been ripped from a stereo track, all all of the other information has been just got rid of. So it really does underline how impressive this piece of software is. Yeah, there's some, now the the shading here, the brighter colors mean louder, con, uh, louder sort of uh, contours, louder volume. So for example, this one, what happens if I get rid of that? If I go from this point here, if you click the cursor, it'll play back from that point. Yeah, that sounds like a guitar chord. Now I could go back and put that in the guitar track, but let's see what happens if I just get rid of that. Yeah, it does separate things out. Now, of course, if you want your vocals to be, if I, for example, um, just close the frequency slider, you can see all sorts of things because lots of sibilance on your vocals. So some S sounds might be a bit powerful. Your step. Step. Okay, well, let's see what happens if I do that. Well, it's calmed it down a little bit. It can make it sound a little bit, bit swishy if you go a bit too mad with it. But you can do all sorts of things with this. It's immense. Immense. Now, just returning to the edit window, if I got this note, for example. Dance. If I wanted to separate the, that's dance floor, dance. If I wanted to separate those words, dance. there you go. About there is where you get the, uh, the sibilance of the C of dance. Now, if I go to my knife tool up here, I can just cut that. Dance. And then I can process these things individually. Now I could go into, for example, the, uh, this, that's quite a flat sounding note. I could go the other other way from flattened pitch to vibrato. Down, 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 down. You get the picture. Down. Now, of course, you can actually change the, the rate of the vibrato if you want as well. And you can do this manually as well. Down, down. There we go masses can be done and the, the the good thing about a piece of software like this is that it kind of never ends you can just find stuff and go oh my goodness i didn't realize it could do that now we've got other things like we can rejoin the notes if i do this you can actually uh join them join them together there we go it's, there we go that's rejoined those two syllables and we've got all sorts of other things you can the next tool along allows you to change the pitch of a note and you can sort of vary it within that note. It's a bit like vibrato, but you can sort of draw it in according to the keyboard on the left. <laughs> a bit of yodeling there. So, as I say, we've got the vibrato. You can have a sine wave or a square wave. You can assign it to pitch or volume or panning. You can make it sweep between left and right. You can also do that with the mixer. Here on any of the vocal tracks, uh, you can actually you can actually change that from left to right. You can actually take a note from your vocal and substitute it with another sound. So I've got my trumpet sound up here, for example. So if I just click on one of these uh, notes, there you go, there's a middle C, ah, a bit vibrato -y. But I could say, okay, well, I'm going to just have a look at this and turn it into a trumpet and it matches the vibrato. So if I just go back and play on the dance floor, so you can do all those sort of things. And of course you can import your own samples as well. You have a, a palette of things here, but you can actually add your own samples using a standard sort of dialogue box and you can import anything to do that. So you can change it to any sound you like. <laughs> the sounds are very nice. They're very usable. 
you know, that it's it's absolutely fine. And sometimes you can supply somebody who's transcribing something. It might be easier to do it with a sound like this, or indeed you can substitute it with anything else. <laughs> you can do anything you like. So there is RIP-X. I've covered the main things. The editing capabilities that you have here is amazing. You can have harmony, which has got like an octave above or a third. You can shift the formants. Now, what does that mean? Well, shifting formants, that means you can turn a male voice into a female one or vice versa. You can do all sorts of things. Special effects, you can do anything with this. And this is all ripped from a single stereo file. How cool is that?